Hey, Joachim. Uh, welcome again to our second uh, video, but the first video of our series of uh, 360 photos uh, in the construction industry. And, uh, you know, like I said last time too, uh, you are, you know, you're doing a great job of kind of promoting everything uh, on, on, on Facebook and LinkedIn and really getting your service out there. Uh, so I think what we wanted to create a series was focused on 360 photographers uh, who are trying to get into this industry, who are trying to target, uh, you know, the construction space. They're trying to think of what are the solutions, why are virtual tools used? And I think that you're the right person to kind of answer that question. And probably I can chime in from a software side uh, or from a larger industry perspective, how it all fits in. So, you know, specifically what I wanted to start off with is uh, why, why 360 photos today for the construction industry, right? Because it's been there for a long time. There are a lot of people using it. But why today? Why do you think that today, uh, you know, 360 photos and the virtual tours make a lot of sense? Hmm. Yeah, they've, they've been using uh, photo documentation for construction for yes. ages. Um, and they've also developed apps uh, that allows them to use their phones for photo documentation. So, so it's very common to, to do the practice of taking a photo and then, uh, you know, writing your comments or, or writing something about that situation in, in a construction site. Yeah. Uh, the game changer really is the, it's not the, the 360 format. It's the 360 one click camera. So you can basically capture the entire sphere with one click. Uh, before, if you want to capture the entire sphere, you had to have at least uh, six images. So one in the front, to the right, to the left, at the top, to the bottom, and to the back. So that, of course, takes time. Yeah. Uh, and also a lot of post-processing. So, so it, it really wasn't an an option unless you wanted the, the feel of walking the space. As for, for documenting purposes and um, yeah, efficiency, uh, the one-click camera really changed everything. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the, the main driver here. And I think it's the, it's the, um, it's one of the factors that hasn't really kicked in yet because now we're in a situation where you could do um, a lot better documentation, at least visually, because you can photograph everything. Uh, even though that has been technically possible before, it has never been uh, practically possible. So basically what you're saying is that it's far more, I mean, construction, unlike, you know, real estate or, you know, your shop or something like that needs a high volume of 360 photos and the, you know, the advent of 360 cameras makes it super easy to take thousands and thousands of 360 photos uh, quickly without too much of, uh, what do you call this, manual intervention, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, regarding uh, 360 images as photo documentation, like proof of work, um, you have this uh, insane new um, effective way of capturing an entire space. So let's say a space is a room. Maybe you just need one image to capture the room and to visually see everything inside that room. Before, you, you need to take a bunch of pictures. So uh, the benefit here is the it's the decreasing of time spent on site photo documenting. Mm. So that's one one benefit here. Okay. Um, so you could you could say that uh, you could photo document a site quicker. Quicker, yeah. But what most people do is they use the same amount of time, and they instead of of capturing like one room or the the things that they know they have to capture they capture everything and they do that almost like every week 
And then you have uh, a lot of new benefits that happen because now you have a digital copy of the entire site every week. So if something breaks, you can go back in time and see if you should have detected that uh, before. Got it. So, so, so I'll pause you here, so because you're getting into a lot of lot of details mm -hmm. and have a series to do. So, uh, so the question is, so so one is obviously the idea that you can create a large volume of images uh, at, at one time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and the second one that you know you kind of s sort of touched on uh, is the idea that the idea you could you could either. Uh, withdraw the effect in time uh, because now you you right. spend less t less time getting the same image information, or you could choose to use the effect to get more image information and spend the the, the same amount of time as you as you used to do. So so that uh, I guess that depends on the priorities, but we we see that in the construction industry they. They spend the same amount of time, but they get end up with a lot better uh, product regarding photo documentation. If you look at uh, virtual tours of construction sites versus the current standard, which is a lot of folders with with uh, normal images, it's it's mm -hmm. a completely different uh, ball game. Interesting. So you're saying like the 360 photos completely changes the way they even like look at a construction site and and you know how things have changed there and so, yeah that's interesting I never thought about that um, but in terms of software now I'm thinking of software do you you know would you think that just giving them a simple virtual tour is enough or do you need a certain kind of specific construction industry specific features that you can think of that probably other softwares provide. We don't provide, I know that. Um, and, you know, does that make their job easier? What has been your feedback yeah. from them? There are uh, several uh, features that are, are useful for the, the construction industry. Uh, I would have to say that the most beneficial one, that is if you can compare two tools of the same site, and uh, navigate uh, through them at the, at the same side uh, at the same time because then you you can uh, compare uh, different dates that's a that's a, um, a really high uh, value gain because mm. then you can have the situation of the current time and before the walls went up so you can look inside the walls and see where the electricals are and, and stuff like that. That's a that's a major uh, benefit that uh, that we see the, um, the industry is struggling with a bit now. You have, for instance, a rehab of an old hotel and they don't know what's inside the walls. So um, right. it, it will solve a lot of problems in the future. Um, and then we have uh, compare the current site or one of the tours with the building information model, which is a 3D digital model. Yeah, yeah. those are the two main uh, benefits regarding construction. Got um, it. Yeah. And, and for a 360 photographer, all right. I mean, I think you you have really put it down. Like, you know, what are the what are the benefits? And I think a photographer or maybe someone who is interested in getting into the business can go and like show this value to the customer. But in your experience of, of showing it to customers, uh, where is it, uh, um, you know, you think they are, you know, the, the biggest roadblock for a large customer, say I'm a large construction company, right? And I want to implement a new software. I want to implement this new methodology for virtual tours. And like you said, the the value for it is not today, it's not tomorrow. It is in six, seven, eight months, right? Um, so how do you, as a service provider, go ahead and convince the construction company that this is where the value is, and this is how you can, like, benefit like from it? Like, what's your general approach? And uh, with the virtual tour versus the uh, standard images that they're using, 
uh, you get one uh, other benefit as well and that uh, you can control this site uh, remotely so and that's an instant benefit so uh, if you if you do um, photo copies uh, I'm with a photo the word photocopy I'm referring to a, a virtual tour of a site at a okay. given date so so if you do photocopies every every week then uh, you will have a digital copy of that site every week and and uh, the construction manager can sit somewhere else in the country or maybe even a different country and and still keep track of the of the process so that that's one of the instant benefits got it uh, especially with the COVID situation i think that's something we should talk about yeah it, for sure yeah is you know how uh, the advent of COVID uh, has really p pushed or maybe is a great uh, selling point for people that want to get into this business that, you know, most of the top management don't want to go to a construction site. Your customers, say you're building a building, uh, a residential complex, and, you know, you have customers and you want to show them how it's working, how it's going, and they, but they don't want to go to a construction site because one is there's a high probability of getting COVID because there's not much of what you would call as like sanitation. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess something like that, the digital copy uh, gives an instant value. Uh, so, so, so what you're saying is that that's, there's an instant value because of the COVID situation. And then eventually, as you have more and more copies of it, there is a long-term benefit of it. Yeah, there, there are more instant values as well, because when you take something physical and turn it digital, you get all the benefits of, of a photograph, because that's basically what this is. But it's an interactive photograph. So so you can have, for instance, if you have a digital copy of a, of a building site, you can have 2000 people looking at it at the same time. That's not possible with a physical space. So that's for some some instances that might be a, a value add like let's say you're a big construction company and you're doing like this huge um, uh, reference project or something that that's out of the ordinary that you want to show at least all your colleagues but maybe the entire state or the entire country then all of a sudden you could you could allow every how many you want into the actual the actual site and because what happens then is, let's say you have a big construction company, people have different expertises. So uh, you, if you have a hundred people visiting the site regularly, chances are that you will notice stuff earlier than, it, than you would if you just have uh, if you had the schedule, I don't know, it depends on the countries, how often they inspect the site. There are many, many different policies, but the, the main concept is the more eyes you have on something, you know, the, the more feedback you will get. And if you can, uh, yeah, all that feedback is, is valuable because uh, someone might notice something that others ha had missed missed and um, for for construction companies it, it's a great way to to leverage themselves you know if they're good to show how show everyone how, how good they are if they're doing like uh, illegal stuff uh, like having illegal workers there's a lot of of uh, gray area business in, in that industry at least in, in this country and I think it's the same for for every country, yeah, it will not be be as appealing to open up the construction site for, for those kind of, of players. But it's finally a, a great tool for uh, everyone else that's that's following the book and uh, to to show that to 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 openly uh, open up the construction site and, and say yeah. we know what we're doing uh, and. Um, and this is what we're doing, and you can you can follow us here if you want to. So uh, it's for construction companies that dare to take that approach. I think it's really uh, it could be a game changer for them and a major uh, competitor advantage. 
Yeah. But you know, you have you have the other side of if you make a mistake and it's in the digital copy okay. and then you know the press can see it, that's of course a risk. So so it's. Uh, it's a risk reward scenario, but the main point is that it opens up a whole lot of possibilities that 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 work. Yeah. yeah. So to put to put it simple, travel cost, decreased travel cost. That's a major selling point that goes across the board. Um, wow. Higher flexibility also happens inst instantly. So uh, for some projects, uh, you need like a specialist. Uh, to come and look at one thing. Uh, here, instead of flying him or sending him to the site, you can send the site to him. Uh, yeah. If you need, uh, regarding like current buildings, buildings that are optional, and you're considering uh, making constructional changes, you could take a photocopy of the building as is, and then send that uh, photocopy or, or virtual tour to to, um, to the construction companies and ask them for a quote instead of shutting down the operation and having everyone come here and then rely on what they remember about the site because yeah. The, the, yeah, the, yeah. You get, that's another spin on the the fact that you can. You can visit it again and again, and at twelve o'clock at night, if you want to, Sunday, if you want to, it could yeah. could be daily operation on site, and you could still have people uh, or, or users visiting it and, and directly getting the information there, thereafter. Got it. Makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that that definitely makes a lot of sense for a construction company. But the I think in general what you would you would hear from construction companies is the debate about cost. Yeah. You know, how much it's gonna cost them, you know, that's kind of where it goes down to. Yeah, it's a great product, it's got a lot of benefits. Um, so what I wanted to also talk about is you know, you don't have to give specifics, but uh, maybe you could help uh, some of you know the viewers understand uh, what are the ways that you could, you know, uh, structure a deal with a construction company? Because, you know, you have the photography cost, you have the manual labor cost of going and coming in. Then it's also like the storage cost, right? Then it's the software cost. Then it's the, you know, uh, how long you want to keep it. You know, all of those things, there's a lot of cost involved for you. Um, and then you have to like sell it to the customer. So generally, what are the costs for, for you to, because for real estate, you know, it's really simple. You do once, it's done, you know, you mm -hmm. go in and capture, you're done. And it's not a thousand, you know, there are not thousands of photographs. It's maybe, you know, maybe 20, 30, maybe 40 at, at most. But what you are selling is a digital twin, which is like a copy, right? So it's, it means a lot of photos and a lot of storage space. So how do you think of it as, you know, how do you how do you price it out to the customer? Yeah. We we want to make it as as uh, simple for the customer as possible. So and we are currently working on uh, a price model like a predictable price model. Now everything is is custom. So now we are relying on a good dialogue with the customer to find out what they need and then to deliver that and then we agree on a on a monthly price. Regarding our costs, we have the same uh, labeled costs as all virtual tours provider, but with, uh, of course, if you if you want to do a, a construction site, most of the value you get from from doing it regularly. Okay, so we have we have a lot more manual work. So the working hours is the uh, is the key cost element here. So there are many ways to 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 look upon that uh, and uh, and solve that. I'll get back to that uh, a bit later. Okay. We have, of course, the the camera course. Um, like I said, uh, one click 360 camera is what we uh, use the most, and there's. You should show people your cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it here. So. Just the helmet okay. we use. And uh, we use the Tita 
that one camera. Um, so those are, we have cost of labor, cost of hardware, mainly camera, it's operated by phone, and then we have the cost of software. So there are different software solutions out there. Personally, I, I use Cupix. Right. Um, the new solution that's called Cupix Works, especially designed for construction. There are several others. Um, and those are your main cost elements. Uh, the highest one, or, or um, yeah, the highest one, that's the cost of labor. So the time it takes to, to shoot a tour like this. Um, there are plenty of ways to to uh, to uh, to decrease the amount of time it takes. Um, right. One of the main points is to ensure that you are always in the what's it called the nadir of the uh, of the uh, like the blind spot of the camera, which is right. directly di uh, directly under it. That's why we have uh, the hat. Is this custom made, or do you do you get do you get actually helmets like that? Oh, they're they're custom. So this is a a, a GoPro. Uh, what's it called? A GoPro like connector thingy. Oh, got it. So we're, we're using that now. We <laughs> the first prototypes. We drilled a hole in the in the hard hat, but then we realized that's probably not within most regulations. So so we changed to. Um, yeah, to to like a GoPro workaround, and we are we will look into uh, 3D printed options as well because we see uh, well we need it. So yeah. so here you you cut out all the the time that you would normally spend either hiding from the camera when you place it on a pole, go hide and take a photo, or post editing yourself out of the yeah. virtual tour. So um, these are, uh, uh, we also, we reduced the, the time on site a lot uh, using one click 360 cameras compared to other scan solutions. It's really a game changer if you want to okay. capture a site often. And that's where most of the value comes from. The hard sell uh, is they have people, the construction companies already have people photo documenting their site because it's uh, they need it to, okay. to take control. So, so if you you could do what what we do, we train that personnel to shoot the site our way, and then we do um, we take care of of everything in the middle. So mm. they they actually shoot the site. We we train them. They shoot the site, and we handle everything and make sure uh, everyone gets a nice experience out of it. And uh, or you could go and shoot the site yourself, but then the construction yeah. company yeah. would have to pay you for for your time, and it quickly adds up. Uh, the way you could go about selling in that service is, I th you would have to to uh, hit more budgets than the actual construction or the building cost budget. So you would go into promoting the site. Uh, you would, of course, touch on the on the construction budget with uh, the saving the uh, uh, yeah, saving travel, uh, reducing travel costs. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so you basically, you basically promote it as a multi-dimensional solution that can be used for different ways. Yeah. Right? What what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, you are, you know, what what is valuable to your customer is not just the photography or it's not just the software. It is the entire package where all they have to do is, you know, click and view or if they want to, like, go ahead and see something, they just have to do that. And what you enable is basically taking care of that entire process. Uh, including the software, including the photography, including you know the coordination between all these people, uh, making sure the BIM files are all correct, and basically setting up this entire process for a company uh, so that they can then handle it. It's like kind of setting up an email account for a company, you know, and then they use the email account. But if there's any problem or they need to send big files or anything of that sort, they they reach out to you. So you're kind of like the 
the go-to person yeah. for the, I don't know, photo documentation of construction. Yeah. And that's a, a, also makes us like the, the uh, what you call, call it the industry expert in that field. Uh, because mm. uh, we we have to be aware of all the the national regulations. Uh, mm. We have to uh, be aware of all the um, the added benefits that we could provide. For instance, when we co if we're uh, dealing with a construction company that's not that uh, experienced with handling BIM files, and and the BIM files are fairly new, uh, so so that happens a lot. We, we we inform them about uh, other value adds that they could could get out of right. you know uh, going more digitalized. So uh, one of the things is if you have combined uh, the electrical layer and the plumbing layer, you can uh, um, run simple queries versus that BIM model and see if there are some collisions. And then you can sort those out in the planning phase. So right, makes sense. So so uh, okay, got it. So so this is not. Well, I mean, while this is a good place for a photographer to go, it's you need other skill sets to be able to provide the service. Right? Yes. Like you, you can't just be a simple photographer and say, okay, I'm going to go provide this. As, like you know, maybe uh, provide this as another service. That's not possible. You need to be somewhat specialized. Uh, in, in kind of understanding software, understanding some regulations, things like that. Yeah, and of course now I'm talking about how, how we do things and, and the reason right. we, we do the uh, things this way is because you know my background is IT operation. So, right. so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm going the operation route. Um, I'm, I'm not a, a photographer. Uh, if I were a photographer, I would play into those strengths. And those strengths are definitely more towards marketing. So you, uh, if, you were, if you have a photography background, like a 360-foot photography background, maybe a real estate, uh, then you, should, you could do the uh, virtual tours as a value add. And uh, you could keep the, the main product something for marketing. Like uh, you could do a, a cool 360 time lapse of the entire space. You could do uh, uh, you could do all kinds of, of beautiful photos. And uh, the, the key really point is to, cares about that as much as what you would call it a digital twin. Yeah, I, I think yeah. More value for the construction company. Yeah. So so. Uh, and I think also a, a, a key point for, for us is that uh, the construction industry, uh, the reason people uh, study constru construction and, and goes into that industry is not necessarily the same reasons as people go into uh, computer and software uh, kind of jobs. So, so so even though there are a lot of tools for the construction industry that they are they not really using it because you know yeah. they, they they that's that's not why they're in that profession they're in their, that profession to make uh, fantastic buildings and they're amazing at it but when it comes to like uh, getting the maximum amount of, out of a digital tool you know it's not it, yeah. they're, not, they're not the best at it. No, and, and, and they shouldn't be because then they would be uh, like the reason I'm good at what I do is I do it all the time. So, right. So, and they're not around software and computers all the time. So, so it makes perfect sense. Uh, so we're, we're trying to, to take more of that role and, and to be one of the, the, the companies within construction that actually allows the construction people to to keep doing construction because uh, the industry has been uh, well aware of uh, all the benefits of uh, digitalization that the last uh, years but but still uh, yeah, anything yeah it's um, there have been many many ways of of, uh, of trying to get those advantages we we've, we've seen uh, one popular choice is to 
to actually take physical computers on the construction site, call them BIM kiosks, and have people there uh, handling the building information model on site. So now you have uh, people doing computer stuff on a construction site. It works, but in my head, it's not, not optimal. You want all the people on the site, you want them to to as much as possible actually work on the site or on the physical site itself. And with uh, Microsoft HoloLenses, you see, you see basically the same. You have yeah. people on the site, one person with a HoloLens. Now you can physically or visually see the building information model with with information there, but he still has to be physically present on the mm -hmm. site. Uh, and, and maybe he's working at the same time, but, but uh, we're flipping everything. We're taking the site, the physical site, into the office. So they can do office work on the physical site at the office and construction work on the construction site. Got it, got it, okay. That, that's that's an interesting way to, to differentiate like the use of what you guys are doing. That's very mm -hmm. that's very cool. Very cool. So um, the other question I had with respect to specifically, you know, people wanting to do this, right? The people wanting to provide this as a service to construction industry. I, I agree with you that there has been a lot of tools that the construction industry has been you know, wanting to take care of, but for some reason there is no, there's been no adoption. You know, I think, you know, the reason why companies like AutoCAD and all of these have existed for decades is because the construction industry is really, really bad at adopting new stuff. So they keep using the old stuff and, uh, you know, it gives the opportunity for older companies to, to survive. Um, what has been your experience when you, uh, show up with the solution, right? Now, they already do photo documentation and they pay a certain amount. Do you tell them, okay, you're paying this amount just for photos. Now, give it to me, same amount, and I'll do the 360 photos. Or do you say, you know, you're paying this much and you're getting only this. You say you're paying $5 and you're getting $5 worth value. You pay me $5 and you get... 10 times value or do you charge them more than, I don't know how much, I don't know if they do charge for photo documentation, but I know that there are softwares, there are programs, there are so cameras that are specific for construction. Like I think there are the Leica cameras that are construction yeah. focused. Um, so, and, th and these are expensive cameras. These are like two, $3,000 cameras. Uh, is that your pitch or do you pitch it as, do you pitch it as a substitute or do you pitch that as a helping tool? Yeah, we, we pitch it as a, a substitute for photo documentation. Uh, but uh, we also mainly pitch the entire solution and the ability to go back in time, the ability to control uh, progress from from uh, okay. from a different site. And, or, or, you, you have to pitch the entire thing uh, basically but uh, there's a, a common trend in the industry if you're selling software to, to construction company they have to pay by uh, a, a, there's a, a ladder of um, related to how big the construction budget is so if it's a $100 million project, then, you know, the software is, is that much. That's how they do it in the industry. And if it's a $1 million project, the, the software costs uh, that much. Okay, so, the, so the, the, the cost of the software is dependent on the project. Yes, yeah. right? and, and we're not following that model at all because we... we not yet. So, yeah, because it, we... we we want everyone to use it, or as many as possible to use it. So, right. so we're actually trying to see how can we make this as cheap as possible for the end user and still add value enough to uh, the fact that they want to buy it. So, so um, we're looking at uh, setting up solutions where we, we do um, you know, where we offer like uh, training remotely. 
Right. And we just uh, send them uh, the gear in uh, the post. And then, uh, yeah, a very low flat monthly fee. And that, it's basically self-service at that point. Uh, uh, so... It's a very different model than than uh, than what the the other software companies are using towards that industry. You see it a lot in in uh, in, um, in uh, IT solutions or uh, like uh, uh, CRM solutions, customer relationships managers. Uh, so basically, cloud software. You you see them. You can pay. You pay one fee for one license. If you're a, a one-person company, then you know you pay a, a low monthly fee. If you're a thousand-employee company, you, you multiply that by a thousand. Okay. That's the the model we're going for. Mm. Okay. And of course, our thought process is: bigger companies want want more. They they're not interested in doing everything themselves. Um, so so uh, so yeah.